Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And as it's the run up to Christmas, I've dug out my lovely Christmas jumper. Now I know you guys in the States like to refer to these as ugly sweaters, and you can call me ugly, but this jumper, come on, it's a beaut. So I've already released a couple of videos about the Messier catalog that I started imaging a few weeks back and I've had another couple of clear nights and I've managed to put together six more images from that list. So I'm in the double figures and I'm pushing on and I'm slowly capturing this catalog. And on my last video, I talked about the Sharpless catalog because there's quite a lot of objects in that that I've imaged before and I really like. And I think it's got an intriguing amount of targets. There's 313, I believe. There's a great resource for the Sharpless catalogue. And if you don't know about it, I'll reveal it here. Okay, so jumping online, you type in sharplesscatalogue.com and it'll bring you to this website. Absolutely full of information. It's got the complete Sharpless catalogue, all 313 targets with an image and all the data. Absolutely fantastic collection of work. And I actually cannot wait to start looking at this in more detail and starting to get the images that I haven't already captured. I have captured quite a few SH2 images but there's a lot I haven't. So what I really like is you've got a main image You've then also for each one got a zoomed version so you can zoom right in and have a good look at it. And you can even look at it in its narrowband colors or it's black and white. Now this isn't available for every image because not all of them have been done in full narrowband um, and some have just been done in HA. But there's a breakdown of what scope's been used, um, what camera, what filters and how many hours it's been imaged for. So it gives you an idea maybe of where you've got to go to get a similar image or something as a good starting point. What I really like here is you've got an inverse image and I like this. It gives you a really different kind of view of it. So I like that too. I think that's a, a nice touch and um, something, you know, I think I might start having a look at myself when I'm doing my images. Um, here we go. We've got each of the... Uh, different color channels there, which is quite interesting. And really nicely, there's a small write-up for each target, giving you some more information, um, like where it is, its RA and DEC uh, coordinates, and a bit of information about it. I mean, there's so much work in this site, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and uh, I think it's a brilliant resource, and uh, I'm very pleased that it's on the internet and available for everyone to grab hold of. So uh, Dean Salmon, who seems to have put this together, congratulations, it's a fantastic piece of work, and um, thank you ever so much. I'm gonna use this and try and image the Sharpless catalog myself. And when I do, I hope you lot join me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry on with the Messier catalogue. I'm gonna get that completed. And then once that's finished, I'm gonna start on the Sharpless catalogue. So that's a big project. And I think I'm gonna to have to call on the abilities of lots of different scopes. Now, luckily I have a variety of scopes to hand. Um, the one that I've been using quite a lot for the start of the Messier catalogue, especially with globular clusters, etc., is the wonderful smart telescope, the Vespera Pro. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a review video on this very shortly. Um, I've done a review before on the Vespera 2, and this is extremely similar, but it's got a much more uh, higher bit rate of uh, camera, and it's got a few other features in there too. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant, and it's really helped me capture a few targets nice and quickly without too much trouble. But I think I'm going to have to call in the use of things like my Mead 8 inch SCT. Up there, I've got an Altair 70 EDQ. I've also got Altair's 130 EDQ. And stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to be releasing a video very soon where I've taken a lovely image of the Cocoon Nebula. In fact, it's the best image I've ever taken of it, and I'm very, very happy with it. 
but there's a lot of hours involved in that but I'll be sharing the details of that soon um, I've obviously got my CT10 on my EQ8R Pro that will be called into action and I'm really hoping very shortly to be receiving uh, an item from Vietnam of all places ML Astro who are responsible for the Spectra Heligraph I think it's called the, the, the great solar uh, tool for taking some of the most amazing images I've seen, proper 3D images of the sun with all the prominences and the surface area and everything, really do uh, find those pictures quite fascinating. Whether I'll actually go down the solar route, I'm not sure. Um, I find just that one object, I don't know. Although it can look amazing, I'm not sure whether it would capture me enough to keep wanting to image it over and over again. But one thing ML Astro are just released and have just made is their SAL33, which is a harmonic mount. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. Finished in a silver anodized finish. It looks very kind of DeLorean looking, in like the car. Um, but I've wanted a um, harmonic mount for some time. I was looking at the uh, ones by ZWO, the AM5, or even the AM3, but I, I, I never quite made a decision on it, and I looked at some of the cheaper ones, the UA, etc., um, and nothing was quite grabbing me, but as soon as I saw the ML Astro one, it immediately I thought, now nah, this looks good. And I know that Min from uh, ML Astro really has taken a lot of time to specify this uh, mount with really good components and has taken a lot of time to make sure it's accurate and well made. And I trust him. He seems like a really nice, honest guy and he's not trying to make as much money as he can. He's trying to make astrophotography affordable. And I take my hat off to you for that, sir, because there's not that many people doing that. And definitely stay tuned for the video on the 130 EDQ by Altair Astro as ASCAR have just announced their new 130 SQA. Um, I think it's more expensive than the Altair one, but one of the big bonuses with Altair is every single one of their scopes will become individually tested for you. So when you order one, it gets made and it's individually tested and made sure that everything is exactly how it should be, perfectly corrected. So you're getting those beautiful round stars right to the corners, even if using a full frame camera. I can hear you thinking, well, does that really matter? We, we crop out the corners and we do things to the stars and we've got blur exterminator, etc. And I use those tools. But one of the things I've noticed with the EDQ is the stars are so good that come out of the scope that when I run Blur Exterminator, hardly any difference between the before and after. With other scopes, there's big corrections being made, putting things back how they should be. But with the EDQ, you can actually get away with not using it because the stars are that tight and that round. Right, so that's enough of me talking. I'm sure it's enough of you looking at this jumper. So let's show you the images I've managed to capture recently and hopefully I'll be able to get some more videos out just before Christmas. So I'll wish you a happy Christmas then. But just in case you miss me, I hope you do have a wonderful Christmas and a fantastic new year. And until next time, I'll see you under the stars.
Thank you.